So I, I really feel a stirring in my heart and um, sharing with you about the kingdom of God and the gospel. And I want to talk about uh, what the Lord is doing in the earth and what the Lord has been doing. And um, I think there's a, a huge misunderstanding of the gospel, but there's also a huge misunderstanding of the kingdom of God and then the church. I think sometimes we confuse the two. We think the church is the kingdom, or we even pit them against one another in one sense. And we may not even realize that we've done it. I've heard people say things like, well, I'm not really about the church. I'm about the kingdom. I don't know if you've ever heard that or said that. If you have said that, you can repent because it's not scriptural. But if you have heard that, if you're about the kingdom, then you're going to be for the church. And if you're for the church, the bride, the community, the people of God, then you are going to be about the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom of God. But they're two different things. And if you study church history, you can see where uh, they kind of got molded together because, uh, you know, the fall of the Roman Empire, fourth and fifth century, and the church began to rise up in places of authority. And then there was like this blending where the church and the kingdom became the same, one and the same. And this was never meant to be that way. It was an unholy leaven that caused a lot of problems throughout the whole Middle Ages for about a thousand years. And it's important we understand that as we are kingdom ambassadors and we are the church of the living God. Can you say amen? amen. I, I think it's important because we have a responsibility in the earth like the, the, the kingdom of God is something that we advance and we release as the people of God. And if we don't understand what the kingdom of God is, oh, you already put the slide up there. Um, we'll read this in just a moment. But if we don't understand what the kingdom of God is, how, how can we advance it? Like, what is the kingdom? Uh, sometimes we mix it up with our political worldviews. Yeah. Yeah. I know I get like three amens on that one. I just knew it. Sometimes we mix it up with just mere social justice. Amen. Or we blend it. Actually, sometimes we confuse the gospel with social justice. How many know that social justice is a fruit of the gospel, not the gospel? Amen. And sometimes we confuse the kingdom of God with our political party. Yeah. Oh, don't shout me down now. Come on, somebody. I haven't even started preaching yet. Yeah. Kingdom over everything. You see, you are a citizen of the kingdom and you are a member of the household of God. Amen. And God is about two things. He's building his house and he's advancing his kingdom. And we see that it was a promise to David in Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7 where David's like, you, you put this dream in my heart, God, I'm going to build you a house. And then the Lord's like, no, you're not going to, but you're one of your descendants will. And how many know he was referring to two people, Solomon and Jesus. And he says that I, he will build me a house and uh, I will establish his kingdom forever. And this was referring to Jesus. And we're going to look at a couple verses related to that. But let's come this morning with hungry and open hearts to maybe step back and say, maybe I've misunderstood what the church is and what the kingdom is. And so that we can move forward as God's people and do his will in the earth. Can you say amen? amen? All right, Luke chapter 17. You guys probably already read ahead, uh, but that's okay. You're forgiven. Once on being asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Wow. Wow. It's not something you can say like, oh, there it is right there. Like a geographical space. It's not where it is, but it's how the kingdom comes. And he goes on and he said, people aren't going to say here it is or there it is because the kingdom of God is, read it, the last part, in your midst. Or another translation or a way to interpret the Greek is the kingdom of God is within you. So what is the kingdom of God? I, I think it's so important that we understand the context of this. When Jesus is preaching, he's talking to a group of people that expected the kingdom of God to come a certain way. 
And I think in the same sense, Christians, we expect the kingdom of God to come the same way the empirical systems of the world come. But how many know the kingdom of God does not come the same way that the world empires come? Jesus even says like, you know, when the disciples are arguing with one another, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And uh, we call that religious politics. And, and they're like, Lord, who's going to sit at your right hand? And Jesus is like, you don't understand the kingdom. We, we don't rule like the world rules. We don't lord like the Gentiles. But we are created. And the greatest among you, Jesus said, is the servant of all. Let's go to the next slide. Isaiah chapter 25. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Come on, somebody. Who proclaim peace. Who bring good tidings. Who proclaim salvation. Who say to Zion, your God reigns. I love this, man. It's like, this is the message of the gospel that, and, and simply put, the gospel is a pronouncement about the kingdom of God. The good news, and by the way, we're going to look at in just a moment, Jesus preached the gospel before he died on the cross. The gospel isn't just about Jesus dying for your sins. The gospel is about a proclamation that a king was born to rule and reign and transform the world and everything in it. And this is what the kingdom of God is. See, we have a limited perspective on the kingdom of God. We think the kingdom of God is, we either get it confused with the church, or we think the kingdom of God is like, you know, when when our NFL team does good. Hello, somebody. Not really, but in the same sense, like, you know, we're, we're looking and we're waiting for some, we're expecting somebody to come, some leader to come and change everything when God is calling us to be kingdom revolutionaries with his love and transform the world with holy kingdom leaven. Yes. You know, Jesus warned the, the, the disciples, watch out for a religious leaven and a political leaven. He said, watch out for the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And he said, also watch out for the leaven of Herod. You see, if we don't understand what the church is, then we will allow a religious leaven to infiltrate the community that God calls holy and calls his. If we don't understand Jesus as Lord, then we will allow a political leaven to infiltrate the way that we see the kingdom of God and we'll try to bring about the kingdom of God in a religious political way. In a way where we're trying and we're hoping that maybe, and I know this might burst your bubble, but we cannot put all of our hope in leaders, although I absolutely believe in voting for good leaders, and I think we need change and transformation and reformation in the nations of the world, but can I just tell you, my hope is not in the next president. I know sometimes that rubs us the wrong way, and if it does, maybe you have too much faith in your citizenship in the worldly kingdoms, and not enough faith in understanding that you are a citizen of heaven. That doesn't mean that we don't influence the, wor- the kingdoms of this world, but it means that Jesus is our king, so we can advance the kingdom. Jesus is our Lord, so we can be the church that he's created us to be. See, there's a revelation of what the kingdom of God is that we need today. How beautiful on the mountains. Every time I read this, I don't know why, but I think about like Lord of the Rings and I think about a hobbit foot climbing the hill and hobbit feet are not beautiful. So when I read it, I have to like, wait a minute. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news And what's so profound about this is, yes, it started in Mark chapter 1, and Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. By the way, repentance, we don't always get that right. We we merely think, and this is, of course, a part of repentance. We think about turning from sin. Of course, it's turning from sin, but it's a radical reorientation. It literally means, metanoia is a Greek word. It means to change the way you think. It means you're doing it the wrong way. It means you're not living life to the fullest. 
Repent and believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is King and Lord. And when I read this, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, you know what the first thing I think of is the cross. And I think about the feet of Jesus that were nailed and how that is the feet. The, the crucifixion was the, the beginning of the coronation, if you will, of the king of glory. Yes. It, going even back further to when they put a crown of thorns, that was the beginning of the coronation of King Jesus. Why? Because the kingdom of God does not come by coercion, control, or manipulation, or legislation, but revolution and transformation and love and humility. Something happens when we represent the kingdom of God on the earth as lowly, humble servants of Jesus where people's hearts melt, the hardest of hearts melt under the weight of the revelation of who Jesus is because that's what the gospel is. The gospel is a revelation of who Jesus is. How beautiful are the feet. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? I've talked about this a few times, but let's just go to the fourth slide if you would. The euangelion, say it with me, the euangelion. euangelion. It's the word evangelism. It means good news. It's the announcement of the reign of a new king. The New Testament, it's The gospel is the story of Jesus, his teachings, his life, and his finished work. It's not just the death, burial, and resurrection. It's everything about who Jesus is and what he accomplished all the way to the ascension and session, which is when he sat down at the right hand of the Father as King and Lord and rules and reigns and has been ruling and reigning, by the way, for 2,000 years. How many know that we are not waiting for the kingdom of God to come? The kingdom of God is here advancing and will come fully when Jesus returns in all of his glory, but we're not waiting. You see, this is one of the big misunderstandings of the kingdom of God. We think that, Lord, we're praying for your kingdom to come. Part of the Lord's prayer uh, was answered when Jesus was exalted and given the name above every name, that every knee will bow until all of his enemies become a footstool. But the, the gospel is the good news of who Jesus is and what he did. And Jesus lived that out. Jesus, everywhere he went, he's God in the flesh, God incarnate. And so he represented the heart of the Father. What is the gospel? It is a revelation of the very character and nature of God as King and Lord coming to transform the world and bring healing to a world of brokenness and disorder. That's the gospel. It's the gospel of the kingdom. Amen? I usually don't preach with slides, so bear with me. Mark 1.15, the time has come. He said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Remember, repentance isn't just turning away from sin. Repentance is changing the way you think. It's a radical reorientation of our hearts to the Lord. In the early church, uh, there was a, a church father in the first century that used, this is just to understand the context of repentance. And there was somebody who was a, a warlord that was trying to bring conquer. He was trying to conquer by bloodshed. And this church father said, you need to repent and you need to believe in me. And he wasn't saying like he was the Messiah. He was saying, you're doing it wrong. And so part of the word repentance, metanoia, is change the way you think, reorient. Jesus is saying, you're doing it wrong. You need to follow me. You're doing it wrong. You're living wrong. You're not living at your full potential. Come on. You're not living. You're not thinking right. And I believe it's still a message of the church. Repentance is ongoing. Like we've misunderstood the kingdom and we've misunderstood what the church is. And we've pitted them against one another. And, and you know, like the Lord knows that we can always point out the dirt and not see the gold in both realms. But the bottom line is we are citizens of the kingdom and we're members of the household of God and Jesus is building his church and advancing his kingdom and it's time for us to wake up and release the kingdom of God in the earth. What is the kingdom of God? I, I love this, uh, trans- or this uh, definition. I took some of this from N.T. Wright. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. And 
He's more of an academic scholar, brilliant New Testament scholar, though. And this is, I, this is a combination of things that I uh, think the kingdom of God is and something that he has written about in a book, I believe it was in How God Became King. So if you go to that next slide, uh, the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? And then the next one. One more. Now look at this. The kingdom of God. Let's just read it together. You ready? Read. The kingdom of God is the reign of heaven that bring God's abounding, thriving, innovative, creative, peaceful, healing, loving order to a world of disorder and brokenness. What is the kingdom of God? It's the reign of Jesus. It's the rule of heaven that doesn't come the way we usually think it comes. It comes by the, his love and his heart. If we want to release the power of the kingdom of God, we need to understand the heart of the king. So many times we're running ahead trying to do the will of God and, try, and we don't know the heart of the king. And this is why worship is such an important part of evangelism. What? What are you talking about, pastor? Because you can't go out and tell everybody about somebody who can change anyone when you don't encounter that somebody. Like we're out there yelling to people on the streets and we don't even know the heart. We don't even see the world through the lens of the person of Jesus. And what he's accomplished. So this is what the kingdom of God is. It's the reign of God. The reign of heaven that brings God's abounding, thriving, innovative, creative, peaceful, healing, loving, order to a world of disorder and brokenness. This is the kingdom of God. And everywhere Jesus went, he released the kingdom of God. The reign of heaven. He's preaching. He says the kingdom of God is at hand. Believe the gospel. I'm here to change everything. Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like leaven. That uh, it's, it's leaven that goes into dough and it permeates the whole thing. It's like a mustard seed, Matthew chapter 13, verse 33 or 31. It's one little tiny mustard seed that grows into one of the largest branches that birds can come and rest upon their branches. You see, everywhere Jesus went, he revealed the heart of the Father. He revealed he was God incarnate. Whether he's encountering the woman at the well Come on, talk about an inclusive kingdom to a, a divided biracial people group that were not included, hello, into the covenant people of God. And Jesus transformed all of that and said, no, this is not my heart. And you look all throughout the Gospels and you see Jesus manifesting the kingdom of God, healing the sick, come on somebody, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, touching the untouched, those that were kicked out of community, those that, I mean, can you imagine the lepers, the lepers, listen, we have lepers in society, the church is afraid to touch, but God is looking for kingdom ambassadors, come on, to be with his heart and begin to move out into the highways and byways and release his love in the the earth because that's what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God has come to transform the world. The kingdom of God is a love revolution and it's one heart at a time. The kingdom of God is the reign of heaven over your heart and then it flows like a river of love through your life. God, we need his kingdom. Lord, we need your kingdom to come and increase. He's building his house. He's advancing his kingdom. And as, as the Lord builds his house, which is us, we're the household of God. We're the family of God. We're the people of God. He, and, and the temple's growing. And, and the temple, we come together and we meet with God. You know, whether it's on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever, we gather. We gather. We together are the church. We are the household of God. We are the temple together. And we should pray as God's building his house that the presence of God increases. That the presence of God keeps increasing. Greater measures of his presence. And as we advance the kingdom, we pray, Lord, let your kingdom advance even further to influence every sphere of society. Whatever that may be, it could be a mom having a, a group with other moms to, to love their kids better. It could be a, a businesswoman transforming ways of thinking in different corporations. Come on, somebody. It could be a, a father, you know, like just loving his kids on a Saturday and wanting to, <laughs> wanting to prepare a sermon but go to a wrestling match instead. <laughs> I bet you can guess who that was. <laughs> Release the kingdom of God, the reign of heaven, the love of God. Listen, the church is built by the edification of itself in love. The kingdom is advanced by love. You know what we're created to do? Lord, these are your missions. You're building your house. You're advancing the kingdom. These things are not pitted against one another. They, they are the kingdom of God is the overarching reign of heaven over all things. Yes. 
that there's leaven, holy leaven that's transforming the world that we need. But the people of God are the house of God. And as we love, the church grows. As we love, the kingdom goes forth. The kingdom of God is the reign of heaven that brings God's abounding, thriving, innovative, creative, peaceful, healing, loving order to a world of disorder and brokenness. That's the kingdom of God. You know, I, th- I think about Matthew chapter 16. You can just leave it on that slide for a minute, and then we're going to skip over a couple slides. Matthew chapter 16, when the, oh man, this is so good. The disciples are with the Lord, and the Lord says, who do you say that I am? You know, one of the reasons we're not advancing the kingdom to our full extent, we don't know who he is. One of the reasons we don't see the church being built on, on the rock, well, first of all, we don't even know what the rock is. We think it's Peter. For Catholic, right? We don't know who Jesus is. We need a greater, greater revelation, a greater, excuse me, a greater revelation of who he is. So when we know the heart of the king, we can bring the kingdom of God on earth in power. Paul said the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And we're a lot of talk. But when, when it really comes down to it, what does the kingdom of God look like manifested on the earth? And Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And of course, they're like, oh, some people say this, some people say that. Some people say this. This denomination says this, and this denomination says that. And then Peter says, you are the Christ, son of the living God. And I, and I love that Jesus like, hey, you didn't figure that out on your own. <laughs> The Father revealed that to you. And what does the Lord say? He says, and on this rock I will build my church and the power of hell will not prevail against it and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind loose on earth will be bound in heaven. Come on. He's saying all of heaven is behind you. He's telling his his disciples, when you understand this revelation of who I am, the kingdom will go forth and my church will be built. Because the rock is the revelation of who he is. But it's even more than that. It's not just Peter. Peter was just a little pebble on the cornerstone, Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Come on, somebody. But they were in Caesarea Philippi, which there's this huge rock that was literally the throne of the enemy. All of these gods, that they had temples with all of these gods, and there was this cavern they called the Gate of Hades. And Jesus wasn't just saying that on this rock I'll build my church. He was figuratively speaking of the very throne of Satan himself right there in that region. Says on this rock, which is right now it might be the throne of the enemy, but I'm about ready to turn it into a tomb. I'm about ready to conquer the principalities and powers and defeat the enemy. And so the the foundation of the kingdom of God, hear me, is that we are victorious in Christ. We're not a church that's wimpy and weak, hiding in caves, waiting for the Lord to return again, waiting for Armageddon. Come on, I'm getting out of here. Enough of that stuff. We are here to conquer. We are here not in a militant way, but in a holy way. Come on. We are here to bring the victorious gospel to the ends of the earth, and we are here to believe God for a harvest of souls that the world has yet to see. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching better than you're responding right now, but the There's something about the revelation of Jesus when you get that he said on this rock, he's saying, I'm about to turn the throne of Satan into the tomb of Satan. I'm about ready to take this thing that has been desecrated with gods and I'm about ready to just shove it all out the window. Come on. I'm about ready to defeat every principality and power. And the Bible says that he was exalted. He he, He harrowed hell. He went into death itself And he took the keys. And Jesus, when he ascended into heaven, he said, all authority has been given to me. Go therefore. Luke 10, 19, he says, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. We have authority when we understand who Jesus is. We have keys when we understand who Jesus is. 
And, and that's referring to the heart of David. See, when you have the heart of God, when you're like a David, his anointed, the, God fashions our hearts like his. It's then we can usher in the kingdom of heaven. Because we want to see the house built, the church. If you don't want to see the church built, you don't have the heart of heaven. If you don't want to see the kingdom go forth, you don't have the heart of heaven. I don't have the heart of heaven. But when we know who Jesus is, Matthew 16, whew, man, on this rock. <laughs> Think about all of the, the places the enemy has reigned in your life that Jesus wants to make it a tomb of the enemy. Where you can dance on the graves of how the enemy has tried to reign over your life. You see, when Jesus is Lord, it changes everything, man. When Jesus is Lord, when you surrender to his, you don't make him Lord, you surrender to his lordship. He's already Lord. He's King and Lord. Think about the thrones of the enemy that God is going to turn into tombs because Paul says we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. We're more than overcomers. I love this quote, Bill Johnson. Oh, this is so good, man. If you can jump to that quote, two slides over. Yes, there are no superstars in the kingdom. <laughs> well, there goes all our religious politics out the window. There are no superstars in the kingdom. And he says, there's just kings that get to rule with the heart of a servant. God, teach us to manifest your kingdom. Teach us to reveal your love to the world around. See, in Luke 17, the scripture we open with, the Pharisees are like, well, show us where the kingdom of God is. He's like, no, you're, you're asking the wrong question. It doesn't, it's not going to be in a location. It's not where, it's how. The kingdom of God, in one sense, is the manifestation of who Jesus is. And the kingdom of God was in their midst because Jesus was standing there. So when we manifest Jesus, we manifest the kingdom. And of course, it's also the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is at hand, available. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We have the opportunity to manifest and advance the kingdom of God on December 23rd, partnering with Agape Haven and releasing and feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. This is the heart of Jesus for humanity. How many want to be a kingdom ambassador? and a citizen of the household of God, a member of the household of God, that we can be about the Father's business. Jesus is building his house and advancing his kingdom. We shouldn't get the two confused, and we should make sure that if we're advancing the king, kingdom, that we have the heart of the king. And we should make sure that if we want to see Jesus build his church and the power of hell not prevail against it, that we're not thinking hellishly, and we're actually opposing what God is doing in the earth. And, and may God expand our capacity of thinking. You know, I have faith in my heart for where we're headed as a community. This is why we're finishing the building, because I have faith in my heart that we will be a church and we will grow. And by the way, growth is not just deep, but it's also wide. Like growth is also in numbers, not just maturity. Hello? Hello? And like, there's no reason any of us should want less impact. Well, I just, want, I just want a small church. Well, then you need to start thinking like Jesus, that he wants to build his church and advance his kingdom. Hello? Like we can, we can, it's not either or. It's like, well, if you have a small church, then it's a family. But if you have a big church, no, it's not either or, it's both and. We, not just, we have to stop thinking either or and think both and. There's a lot of both ends that will revolutionize the way you see the world. Right. Think both end. Yep. We over compartmentalize things and we're like, but I have a lot of faith in my heart. May God expand our capacity to see, to think, 
our prophetic vision? Because I'm telling you, and I prophesy that we will be a people, not just large in numbers, but a family, uh, a beautiful house of God that carries a a new wineskin of leadership and church planting and bringing revival in the earth. And we're going to see this building filled and we're going to multiply. Come on. And we're going to advance the kingdom and we're going to reach our city and it's going to go beyond our city to the nations. This is the heart of the Father. If local churches started thinking this way because they know who Jesus is, we don't serve a puny little Lord that's just, well, we just want to, you know, hopefully we can save like 10 souls in the next 10 years. Screw that, man. My wife hates when I say like crap and things like that. I'm not looking at her right now. <laughs> Love you, baby. I didn't blow a kiss at Max. I, it was Rochelle, just so you know. What, what is it? Where's our faith, man? Like, Look at the early church impacted by the power of the Holy Spirit preaching the word of God with boldness and in one day, 3,000 souls were added to the church. Wow. And they met in the homes and in the temple. It was both and. It's not like, well, it's all about the house church. That's the life of the church. Oh, stop it. God can move in big gatherings and small gatherings. He does it all. Come on. Discipleship is relational and life on life. But God honors the zeal that we have for the Sunday gathering. We meet on the Lord's Day, and there's nothing wrong with large churches. It's when we have the wrong mentality, and we water the gospel down. That's when it becomes wrong. But may we think differently and see differently and think, wait a minute. Have I limited God? Am I, do I have a, this puny version of Jesus as Lord? You see, if, if I'm surrendered to his lordship, then I'm going to look at the church differently. I, I'm going to look at like, oh man, we should be multiplying. I need, I got to disciple some people. Listen, I disciple people. We discipled, we planted a church in Las Vegas. 12 people in a coffee shop grew to hundreds. It's still going and they're reaching their city and they're seeing people saved, healed and delivered all the time. We're called to reproduce ourselves. We're called to pour into people. May God give us a greater vision of who he is so that we can carry out his will on the earth. Jesus is Lord of all. Let's think bigger. Same thing with the kingdom of God. If we don't see him as king of kings, then we're still stuck in our political party and we're still stuck in our religious politics and we're still stuck in all the junk that limits how we can advance the kingdom. May we see him as Lord and King. We know our citizenship as kingdom ambassadors, and we know our membership as the family and the household of God. When we get these things, man, we will transform the world abroad. Can you say amen? Amen. Will you stand up and can we pray? Father, 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 Father. Can we pray? Just lift your voices and lift your hands. Come on. Jesus, your Lord. Jesus, your King. King of glory. King of glory. Give us your heart, Lord. Give us your heart for the broken, Lord. Give us your heart for your bride and give us your heart for the broken, for humanity. We want to see you build your church and your kingdom go forth. Your temple is growing and your kingdom is advancing. Say that with me. Your temple is growing and your kingdom is advancing. Thank you, Lord, for reformation and revival. Thank you for what you're doing in the earth, Lord. May we stop looking for the kingdom to come in a geographical space. And may we say, Lord, how does your kingdom manifest? It manifests through love. Isaiah 16 says a new government of love will be established in the venerable Davidic tradition that, that he will raise up a ruler that's just a ruler that we can depend on. And that ruler is Jesus. We can depend on Jesus. We can depend on the King of Lord, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
And Father, we pray that you would raise up, Lord, a, a, way, a new way of thinking to influence the political realm, the business realm, in every area of society that we would be kingdom holy leaven manifesting beyond the walls of the church and the places of gathering. But Lord, we want good people and authority. We want good rulers. But most of all, may we identify with our citizenship as kings and priests because it's your kingdom over everything. Thank you, Father. Teach us to honor. Teach us to love. Wow. Wow. When we flatter one another, we make we puff each other up, make 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 each other feel way more gifted in areas that we're not. When we honor, we allow the gifts we never, the treasures in us we never even realized we had come forth. Teach us culture of the kingdom to love honor and serve because there's no superstars in the kingdom only kings that rule with the heart of a servant teach us to be foot washers Lord would you just do that in our hearts teach us to love just give me a minute and just want to wait on the Lord just a moment longer. Thank you, Father. Bless your people, Lord. Touch every heart. If you just, if you want to surrender to his Lordship afresh, you want to have a vision expanse to see the kingdom advance in the earth. You want to capture God's heart for the broken. I want you to quickly, would you just come to this altar? Can we pray together? Maybe, maybe that's the main prayer. Lord, give me your heart for the broken. I just have this sense, the, the lepers, the untouched Lord, give us your heart. If you want to surrender to Jesus, he loves you. Just come, just come. You can stand here. You can kneel before the Lord. Father, give us your heart, Lord. Lord, would you touch your people, every person that's coming, every person that's here? Jesus. Jesus. Teach us to be your people, your family, your community that love each other. To live in your presence together. We love you, Lord. 